Well, hello there. Do you love vintage elegance? Do you want to learn how to draft a sewing pattern, but feel a little bit intimidated by the process? Or are you a plus size woman who's heard about the Haslam pattern cutting system and wonder if it will work for larger sizes? If so, join me for this video series where I draft full figure foundation pattern blocks without without using a dress form to help me out. We briefly interrupt this video to explain why I look like I'm wilting throughout this video. I don't know about you, but my body doesn't even come close to the fashion industry ideal. Aside from the creative aspect, sewing enables me to wear beautiful clothes that fit my personal body measurements. However, as I mentioned in a previous video, commercial patterns are created for a certain ideal body in mind. And I get it, unless they're in the business of creating custom patterns, they need to come up with a standard in order to market the patterns to the most people. Those of us in the sewing community who love vintage fashion have a secret weapon available to us, the Haslam system of dress cutting. In this system, you make a basic pattern that is then used as a foundation to draft your own patterns using the designs from the Haslam booklets. This foundation, as it is called, could be thought as being similar to a sloper or basic block. And because I know people will ask, I will remind you, I want to remind you that you can find the links to the materials I will be talking about today in the description box below the video. So let's back up a minute. What is this thing called the Haslam system of dress cutting? Well, it gets its name from Grace Haslam, and I'm looking at my notes to make sure I get this right, who taught sewing in and around Lancashire, England. In the mid-1920s, she devised a system consisting of a chart that is part ruler, part French curve, part Taylor square, and 100% ingenious. The foundation book that enabled you to draft the foundation to your measurements that you then tested and tweaked for a good fit before turning it into the base pattern that you copied and altered. The pattern drafting books that usually came out twice a year contained about a couple dozen pattern designs. Miss Haslam traveled the country introducing her system introducing her system and her classes were taught by seamstresses who were experts in using this system. Her pattern drafting books, they're called supplements in the system, clearly show that she kept up with the la latest fashions coming out of London and Paris. The last pattern drafting book was released in the 1960s. Now, there's this misconception that plus size bodies are difficult to dress, especially those of us that are well-blessed beyond the B cup size. But one of my goals for the Modern Retro Woman videos is to dispel this myth as we fearlessly explore drafting our own patterns. We are all different, beautiful, and worthy, worthy, I want to say that again, third time, worthy of clothes that make us feel fabulous all of the time. And one of the keys to a great fit is understanding our own unique body shape and size. As I started exploring this method of pattern drafting versus other flat pattern drafting methods, I noticed right away that Haslam, the Haslam system relies on just a handful of measurements that you can take yourself. I, I mean, if you're lucky enough to have someone to help you with the measurements, go for it. But I only have my artist husband who, even after 43 years, doesn't quite grasp the fact that I need accurate measurements, not an, oh, it's about X inches. But you know, he's cute and he kills bugs, so I'll keep him. A trick I picked up somewhere is to take the metal end, see how you've got your metal end, take the metal end off of your tape, measuring tape, 
and stick a safety pin in through the holes that the that are left behind by that metal end. And then you can just slip. I've got I've got it on a quilt and measurement tape at the moment. And then you can just kind of slip it in and use it that way to help you with measurements. Um, and then that way you can do it like one handed and use the other hand to help keep things in place. So that's, so that's what I do um, to help me measure. I'm not going to show you how to take measurements you need in this video because Joanne Limanova created a great video that you can use as a resource if you need to. But basically for the dress foundation, again, I'm going to look at my notes. You need your, your neck, your neck, shoulder, the length of your garment, your bust, hip, and underarm length. For the sleeve pattern, you need the armhole, sleeve length, your elbow, and wrist measurements. And of course, if you want a skirt, you need to take your waist measurement. And that is it. Really, really, uh, not all of the 5 million measurements you need to take with other flat pattern methods. And I was kind of dubious about this. I thought this can't work. But I have to tell you, this is the best fitting first draft I've ever made. And I'm in love with this pattern drafting system. Okay, so in addition to the measuring tape to take your measurements, and sorry, most of the world who uses metric system, which is much more logical than inches, it is, the system is done in inches. So you'll need a measuring tape with inches on it. Sorry. You will also need the following things, and I'll put the links in the description box below the video. And I want to make clear, I want to clarify, because I had some questions about this in a previous video. I'm a customer just like you. Um, I am not the one selling these things. I am an educational psychologist who has a passion for this and want to share this information with you. So um, putting the links in the description box. All right, so you're going to need the chart. And this system is out of copyright. So there are a lot of different places where you can get the chart. Uh, the original charts from the 20th century are hard to come by and are quite spendy. But there's a bunch of different sellers on Etsy, for instance, who are who are selling the charts and other materials. So I first started out with um, a tiled version of the chart where I printed at home and taped it together. But my printer just is, even though it is scaled at 100%. It just doesn't like having things lined up perfectly. So I ended up ordering a full size chart from My Vintage Wish on Etsy. That's what this one is. And uh, printed it out on A0 paper, blueprint paper, at my local office supply store. And then I mounted it on, use, I mounted it on cardboard using spray adhesive, but I ended up not using enough adhesive. So make sure you use a lot of adhesive. And that's what this is. I did put some clear contact paper over it just because I didn't want it to get grubby. Um, then there's the foundation draftings. And this is the one from Mrs. Depew. Um, and this is the instructions and the illustrations on how to draft your foundation. You'll need paper for your pattern. And I prefer using dotted paper for drafting my patterns. And I'll include the link where I bought mine in the description box. You'll need a pe pencil with an eraser. Now in the video, I use Sharpies so that you can see what I'm doing, but trust me, you'll want a pencil with an eraser. And you know, although it's not absolutely necessary, I liked using my clear gridded ruler instead of the chart's straight edges, a yardstick, and this is since all of my supply, my sewing stuff is pretty much in storage while we are cleaning out my in-laws house. Um, I found this 
styling design ruler at my local craft store. And I found that it helped a little bit too. All right. So that's the tools that you need. But these extra things aren't necessary. I just thought that they were helpful. Okay, so in order to approach this process fearlessly, I want you to think back to when you were a student and you were told to free write your first draft of a paper on a particular um, on a particular topic. Your teacher did this to get your writing juices flowing, but rarely, very rarely, was this your best writing. There were mistakes that needed to be corrected. There were things that needed to be rearranged. There were factual things to double check. And sometimes things just didn't make sense. So it's kind of the same thing here. Very rarely is your first attempt going to be your final product. One thing we have going against us is that people learning how to draft these foundation patterns were taking one of Miss Haslam's courses. And there was a teacher there to guide the students through the process, to answer questions, to help make adjustments if they needed to be made. Uh, just like you have a teacher, uh, your writing teacher there while, while you're learning how to write a paper. Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. So we have to approach this process is kind of a trial and error process. And as an educational psychologist, I can tell you that the trial and error processes can be one of the best ways to learn how to do something new. And as far as I can tell, there's not going to be any physical danger in the trial and error process here. I mean, you don't want to use this method if you're going to risk physical harm, but I'm going off on a tangent. So what we're going to need to do, since there's a trial and error process, we're going to need to put our thinking caps on. I, 25 years later, I'm still paying off my grad loan and I paid more for my regalia than I did my wedding gown. So I'm going to wear this stuff as often as I can. But the good news is that this process doesn't seem to be any more onerous than making pattern adjust adjustments to a commercial pattern. So the time we take to go through this process and make multiple drafts until we get the best pattern we can that fits us well, will actually save us time in the long run and really sets the foundation. See what I did there? Hence the name foundation for the building blocks to create our own clothes and an amazing vintage wardrobe. Now, Mrs. DePew, I showed it to you earlier. Mrs. DePew offers a downloadable PDF that includes all of the foundations for the different decades. So as the styles changed, the foundations changed. And my understanding is the biggest change really had to do with the waist location. So, you know, in the 20s, the waists were very dropped waist, and then they started moving upward, northward, as the dec decades went along. I read that drafting the early 1940s foundation is a good starting point for drafting the foundation patterns. And I like, let me see if I can show you. I like that there are instructions for drafting for a fuller figure. Now, there are two foundations in, the, in this time period. Foundation one, foundation two, <laughs> funny that. The biggest difference between the two foundations is that foundation two has a side bust start built into it. Whereas foundation one just makes a note saying when you're drafting the garment pattern to make it a little longer and put a side bust start in there. If you are a plus size up with a bust over 40 inches, Go through the instructions in the foundation drafting booklet or printout, however you have it, and highlight the special instructions specifically for the fuller figure because you don't want to miss those. And it'll be easier to find them if you highlight them first. And if you look at the chart, you'll see, let's see, this is the back the front. You'll see different markings. You have shoulder measurements, 
neck measurements. This is your bust. And then you have these different notations that are mentioned during the pattern drafting process. Use an awl to punch through or a nail, whatever you have, to punch through the circle at that point and make sure it's nice and big and, and do the same thing on the other side. So this is the front to make the front pattern. And this is the back to make the, wait for it, back. Um, and the holes aren't necessarily in the right place. Now for me, I have a thick neck and the neck measurement didn't go clear up to my measurement. So I just kind of eyeballed it and made a hole. And we're gonna see how that impacted my, um, my fit in the next video where I show, um, actually create the mock-ups for the fit. Being the scholar that I am, of course I had to research everything as much as I could. And I read lots and lots and lots of comments from people who want to try out the Haslam system, but they feel really intimidated by it. And I think one of the reasons it is so intimidating is because of the way the instructions are laid out. It is very much an artifact is very much an artifact of its time. The letters are in bold, the font is small, there's barely any white space to it. Um, and then you look at the illustrations and it's got you know numbers and squiggly lines and things you're just kind of going, oh, what do I do? Well, first take a deep breath, but time travel back, think in old timey, what the youngsters call old timey language. And then you'll start seeing that you'll, you can start getting into Miss Haslam's mind and see how her mind operated. And it was actually quite beautiful and methodical. And I think that's why the system works so well. Basically, you just find the foundation the instructions for the foundation that you want to make. So like here is the instructions for the back and follow the steps. And the, they're fairly detailed, but you're going to do a lot of back and forthing. And is that correct? Forthing? We just made a new word. Um, but basically how it works is you're going to create the outside lines of the pattern and then fill in the details. Kind of like when you're making, uh, completing a picture puzzle, <clears throat> like everybody did during the pandemic. You, how, well, for me, complete the outside of the picture puzzle first, and then you start filling it in. So that's what you're gonna do here. I'm, I'm gonna show you the video. Obviously in the video, I'll be going through the process, but I'm also going to put a link to the Drafting Haslam blog, and on there's a blog post where Aaron Sloan, the author of the, the blog, shows step-by-step -step how to draft a pattern. It doesn't have the adjustments for the fuller figure, but it's a very helpful article nonetheless. Also, as soon as I finish this entire process, I plan on writing a more detailed guide that will have that I will have available on my Patreon shop, and members of the Elegance circle level of the modern retro woman patreon community will get the guide for free as part of their membership benefit so in this video we'll focus on drafting the foundation pattern in the next video we will look at i will be making several mock-ups uh, to test the fit and tweak the foundation pattern of a bunch of different things until i'm satisfied with how it basically the intersection of how well it fits and my personal taste. You can't see it here, but I made a straight line a couple of inches in from the edge of the paper and treated that like the paper's edge. The instructions say to put the chart along the edge of the paper, but I liked having a bit more room. So after lining the chart up, backside facing up, make a mark at dot A and then your neck measurement, your shoulder measurement, and then your bust measurement. Lift the chart and label dot A as A, 
dot B as B, neck as one, shoulder as two, and bust as three. Now you're going to draw the center back by starting at A, drawing to B, and then continuing to make a straight line as long as you want the dress to be. Next is the shoulder line by drawing a line from number one to number two. Now the neck curve. Turn the chart so the front is facing up. Look for the notation that says arrow curve. Place that at number one and draw a line to dot A. For the armhole curve, find the arrow H and place it at dot three. Now draw a line from dot three to two. Now you're going to adjust the shoulder seam by raising it half an inch and extending it at uh, extending it one fourth of an inch at dot two. Then redraw the line from the new number two to number one and dot three. For the hip, turn the chart over so the back is on top again. Place corner six at dot three and measure down 13 inches. Do not draw a line yet, just make a dot. Place corner six along the center back with the long edge of the chart, touching the dark dot you just made. Divide your hip measurement by four and then subtract an inch. Draw a line starting at corner six equal to that, that hip calculation you just made. Make a dot at the end of that line and label it number four. For the underarm or side seam, that's what it really is, a side seam, draw a dotted line from dot three to dot four. Then measure down from three and mark your underarm length. At that mark, measure in one inch. Make a dot and label it number five. Draw a straight line from three to five and then from five to four. You'll then add the bottom edge, which will be two and a half to three inches wider than your hips. Draw a line from number four to the bottom edge, and you'll just use the chart to shape the bottom. Then the instructions tell you to just look at the chart for the waist and waistline dart. So essentially, draw a straight line from the center back to dot number five. At the center back, make a mark one fourth of an inch below that line. For the dart, measure in along that straight line three and a half to four inches, depending on your body type. Make a mark, measure another one inch, and make another mark. Those are the ends of your dart legs half an inch between the two marks, measure straight down five and a half to six inches, and mark the end of your dart. And then just draw your dart legs up from that dot to those ends. Now go back to that weird one quarter inch mark you made below that waistline, and make a line from that mark to the edge of the dart leg closest to the center back. You'll be cutting that wedge out. You are now done with the back pattern. Be sure to make notations such as pattern piece and date. So when I drafted this pattern, I knew things weren't right. For one thing, this is supposed to be the waistline and this is supposed to be the hip line. And according to that, there's only one, two, three inches between my waist and my hip. And I know that that's not true. Um, I know from making adjustments to patterns that it's about six inches. Um, I am petite. I'm long-waisted, or my I have all of my height in my torso. Um, but I know it's about six inches. And 
So I re-measured this line here and decided that my, my underarm length, which is kind of, it's not very clear. It says, you know, stick it right up under your underarm and down to your waist, and that's what the measurement should be. Well, I decided that it's actually three inches too long um, because this would give me just the right length and this here. So um, I redrafted it off camera, and this pattern, this version, looks like I would expect a pattern to look. This is my horizontal balance line. This is my hip line. This is my waist. Um, and it looks like things are in proportion the way it should be. Drafting the front to foundation one is almost the same as drafting the back, except that you'll be adding a dart that originates in the shoulder. Also, the drafting adjustments are only for those of us with fuller figures of bust measurements over 43 inches instead of 40 inches. So, using the chart front side up, make a dot at your neck measurement, then add the C arrow, dot A arrow, shoulder measurement, and bust. Number these marks as one for your neck, C, A, two for the shoulder, and three for your bust measurement. Now draw a dotted line from number one to C. Then continue that line one and a half inches beyond C. To make your center front, draw a straight line from that the end of that extended C line, the required length of the dress. For the shoulder, draw a dotted line from A to number two. For the adjustment, you're going to measure half of an inch to the left of number two, and that becomes your new number two. This is to take into account the greater dart depth that our fuller busts need. For the neckline, place arrow F on number one and make a dotted line around the curve to A. Next comes the armhole. At first, the instructions seem wonky, but it works beautifully. Flip the chart over so the back is facing up. Find the arrow that says 43 inches to 48 inches and line it up with number three, with the blue part of the curve touching number two. Draw the curve from number two to the broad arrow notation on the chart. And you may want to make like a little hashtag or some other notation at that spot just to find it easier. Flip the chart over and line up the broad arrow with that spot and continue the line to dot three. Don't lift up the card. Don't make my mistake I did. Line your ruler up with the broad ruler arrow line and make a new dot three eighths of an inch away from the edge of the chart. You're now going to draw a new armhole curve by moving the chart so that the broad arrow touches this dot you just made. Draw a new line to the shoulder, flip the chart over, and finish the line to number three. Drawing the hip line is the same as for the back. Corner six to number three, measure 13 inches down and make a dot. Now, remember that inch you took off of your back hip measurement line? You're going to add it back here. So flip the chart over and place corner three along the center front line with the chart touching the dot you just made. Draw a line from corner three or the center front equal to your hip measurement divided by four plus one inch. Put a dot at the end of that line and label it number four. For the underarm side seam, draw a dotted line from number three to number four. Then you'll measure down the underarm length from number three and make a dot. At that dart, excuse me, at that dot, at that dot, measure in one inch, make a new dot and label it number five. Now draw your straight lines from three to five and from five to four. At this point, you draw the bottom of the dress. The line will be two and a half to three inches wider than your hip and use corner one to complete the slight curve of the dress bottom. Draw a straight line from number four to meet the bottom of the dress. Now you're going to true the pattern by laying the back pattern over the front to ensure that the side seams match. And if they don't, adjust the front pattern 
if necessary, to match the back. At this point, the instructions tell you to look at the diagram to make your darts and other adjustments. So starting at the neckline, measure one inch out from dot number one and make a new dot uh, and make a new number one. At dot A, you're going to measure one and a half inches out to create a new dot A. Putting the H notation on your chart at the new dot one, draw a new neckline connecting one and A. And then draw a straight line from number one to the extended line at C to connect the neckline to the center front line. For the shoulder, the shoulder and the darts, measure two and a half inches in from number two and make a mark. At that mark, measure half an inch above the shoulder line and make a new dot. Connect that dot with number two to make a new shoulder line. That point is also the end of one dart leg. From the mark you just made, two and a half inches from two, number two, measure another two and a half inches, to, excuse me, measure another two and one fourth inches for the other dart leg and make a mark. Now measure down six and a half inches from number two. Make a mark. From there, measure in three and a half inches. This is the point of your dart. Draw your dart legs from the point to the ends on the shoulder line. And you should note that the shoulder line is uneven on the pattern on either side of the dart. The waist is similar to the back, but the wedge goes almost all the way across. Make a half inch mark below the dotted waistline at the center front. Draw a straight line in for three inches at that mark. Place corner one next to number five and draw a line to meet that three inch line you just drew. <laughs> this is your new waistline. To make the waist start, measure in three inches from number five. Make a dot, measure another three fourths of an inch, make another dot, and those are the ends of your dart legs. Midway between those two dots, or dart legs, dart leg ends, measure down four and a half inches, and that's your dart point, and draw your dart legs. And that's, and then you're done with foundation one front. And make sure you, you know, make notations, say foundation one, and the date, and so forth. For foundation number two, the instructions are identical up to the part where you use the diagram for adjusting the neck and adding the darts, except that you don't go beyond dot C when making the dotted line from one to C for the center front. So for this part of the video, I'm just going to focus on the full figure adjustments and darts, and darts based on the diagram. The first thing you're going to do is adjust the neckline, shoulder line, and center front. At dot A, Extend the shoulder line two and a half inches out to create a new dot A. At dot number one, extend the neckline one and three quarter inches to create a new number one. And at C, measure out three quarters of an inch for a new dot C. And at the waistline, measure out half an inch and then down one inch for your new waistline. And you can go ahead and make that line for the waistline all the way across. Place the F arrow on your new dot one and draw the new neckline to dot A. Draw a straight line from number one through C and connect it with the new waistline. And it's going to stick out about a half, it's going to stick out in half an inch from the skirt part of your pattern. And that's how it's supposed to look. So you didn't do anything wrong. For the shoulders and shoulder dart, measure up one quarter inch from number two and make a mark. Measure two and a half inches in from number two on the shoulder line and make a mark. Then measure half an inch up from that mark and make another mark. 
This is one end of a new shoulder line and the end of a dart lake. Connect the half inch mark with the one quarter inch mark to make a new shoulder line. Shoulder line. And now at that two and a half inch point, measure another two and a half inches to make the other end of the to make the end of the other dart lake. To mark the point of the dart, find the broad arrow point on your armhole curve. And that's that place where you had to flip the chart over when you were marking the curve. Then measure in four inches from that point and, and, and make a dotted line there. Then measure up a half inch from that the end of that line and make a mark. That's the dart point. And then draw your dart legs. For your side seam, the basic process is the same as before, but you're just going to make some tweaks. You're going to measure 15 inches down from number three to make a new dot number four and make a dotted line between three and four. Then you're going to add one and one fourth inch to your usual underarm length and measure down from number three to make a mark and then measure in one inch to make a new dot five. So basically you're making the side a little bit longer to take into account that side dart. Make a dotted line from three to five and a straight line from five to four. To make the side dart measure three inches in from number five, and then up four and a half inches. Make a dotted line and make a mark at that end. That is your bust point. For the legs, measure one and a half inches up from number five along the dotted line that heads towards number three and make a mark. That is the location of the end of one dart leg. Draw the dart leg to that to the dart point. Turn the dotted line from the dart point to number five into a solid line. For the other dart leg, measure up along the dotted line another one and one fourth inches and make a mark. Then you're going to measure out a one fourth inch at that mark. That is the end of your other dart leg. Make a straight line from that mark to the dart point, and that's your side dart. Draw a straight line from the end of that dart leg you just made up to number three. Somewhere in there, I seem to have also made the waistline curve by placing the corner number one at dot number five and connecting it with the new waistline for a long curve. This wedge will be cut away. And then finally, the waist darts are made the exact same way as for foundation one. So that's the drafting process, the first draft. And I wanna say, even though it was the best, fit I've ever had as a first mock-up for a slipper, I still need to make adjustments for my well-blessed bosom, the neckline, and the side seam start pulling a little bit towards the back around my hips. Easy fixes. Also, <laughs> you'll want to watch the next video when I upload it because I tried to save fabric and it is the shortest dress I have ever worn in 50 years. I put it on and I felt like I was in an episode of the original 1960s Star Trek series. It was, it was, it was short. So you'll want to um, see that just for the laugh fac factor. If you're like me and are in the process of rebuilding your wardrobe for this season of your life and coming out of the pandemic doldrums, or you just like vintage sewing videos, I encourage you to click on the subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so that you'll know when I upload the said Star Trek.
mock-up. Also, I'm all about community building. So share this video with our kindred sisters so that, you know, the more the merrier. I also invite you to check out the Modern Retro Woman blog at modernretrowoman.com to explore my articles on living a gracious and elegant lifestyle inspired by the wisdom of mid-century mentors. As of the publishing of this video, I am offering a secret rule of 14 checklist that mid-century women used as a guide to help them always look poised and polished no matter what they felt like. It's a thank you gift for joining my almost weekly newsletter where I share mid-century wisdom from our mid-century mentors. And finally, if you're interested in supporting my work, please visit the Modern Retro Woman Patreon community. The link is in the box below. As always, thank you for joining me today and being part of our community of kindred spirits. And thank you, a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Until next time, have a fabulous Technicolor day. Bye now.